This episode is brought to you by my friends at Chubby's Shorts. Their tagline is, the weekend has arrived. And I gotta be honest, it does always feel a little bit like a weekend when I'm wearing my favorite five and a half inch training shorts because they have the comfort of something that you can throw on and you just forget all about. With the built-in liner, I get zero tugging, zero chafing, and zero adjusting when I've got the four-way stretch that Chubby's has going on. They're super soft, but always supportive. And I like take these things through every single movement imaginable from cleans, Olympic lifts, squats, lunges, double unders, biking, and more. And let's not forget to mention that Chubby's come in the best color combos, all with built-in compression liners. If you wanna go basic, you can, or if you wanna show off your personality like I do with some eye-popping patterns, they've got you covered. Make sure you visit chubbies.team forward slash Marcus Philly. You're gonna find your favorite new shorts in a variety of colors and inseam lengths. Again, I use the five and a half inch if you're looking to purchase what I've got. Make sure you use code Marcus15 to get your 15% off on your first purchase. I guess it means that my testes just might not have the ability to produce higher levels of hormones. Basically, it could all trace back to that one time that I got whacked in the nuts. Hey, come on in here. Yeah, come in real close. I got a secret for you. I'm gonna share something very personal with you today. A lot of people have accused me and other CrossFit and fitness influencers of using performance enhancing compounds, exogenous hormones to be specific. But in reality, low testosterone affects almost 40% of men 45 and up and many in their 30s as well, including me. Stick around and I'll tell you exactly what happened. I know, I don't have the physique of somebody that you might think of as having low testosterone. And according to many people's assumptions on the internet, I am juiced to the gills. But the truth is that in my early 20s, I got my first comprehensive blood panel done. And to my horror, it showed that my testosterone was below the reference range. In other words, I barely got on the scoreboard. But what led me to this alarming discovery? Well, in my senior year at UC Berkeley, I was clinically depressed. I had just come off of a grueling six month period of studying for my MCATs to go to medical school. I poured a massive amount of energy into test preparation while I simultaneously trained my ass off and dieted hard for the first time in my life to get absolutely shredded. At the culmination of all that, I ended up with a major back injury that cut training out of my life almost completely. I was also unsure if I was even headed down the right career path. All in all, I was pretty defeated, overworked, stressed, and now injured. So before I could get on antidepressants, my doctor wanted me to go and have a better picture of my health by getting a comprehensive blood panel. So we got the test. Low testosterone wasn't even something anyone was looking for. But when the red flag pops up, the medical paradigm is to follow up and investigate. So we ordered more tests, more visits to specialists. I got sufficiently freaked out when I wound up at the office of the head hematologist and oncologist at UCSF Medical Center. They wanted to rule out if I had a tumor or a cancer that might be causing my hormone imbalance. Tumors, like I was freaked. And the end result, nothing. The doctor said, that might just be your normal level of testosterone. And so a depressed kid in his early 20s just decided to move on. I got on antidepressants, I graduated college with honors. Then I escaped the academic world for like two years. I traveled the world, coached soccer, got back in shape, renewed my passion for health, fitness, and life. Somewhere along the way in those two years, I got off the antidepressants that originally helped me uncover the fact that I had low testosterone. The quick summary of the next two years of my life is as follows. I finally went to medical school in hopes that I could turn a passion for fitness and wellness into a new paradigm in medicine. Well, let's just say it didn't go as planned. One torturous year of medical school and I was back into clinical depression, back on medication, and eventually I dropped out of school. Now, just like last time, 
With more time, I found my footing again, and I became a fitness trainer. Becoming a fitness trainer seemed to be a true calling, and I totally got hooked and dedicated again. I was passionate, and I had drive, and I was starting to train my body with CrossFit at that time. And the next eight years, I went deep down the rabbit hole of CrossFit. From 2010 to 2014, I was becoming a better coach and a better athlete. I was climbing the world rankings in CrossFit. I was part of a team that qualified for the CrossFit Games three years in a row. We finished as high as sixth place in the world. In 2013, I transitioned to the individual competition for CrossFit, and I made a similar run, climbing the ranks from 33rd to 21st, and eventually in 2016 to 12th place in the world. My journey as an athlete was incredible. At each step, I looked at ways to improve all aspects of being an athlete, increase fitness, improve sleep, get better nutrition. I really left no stone unturned. In 2014, my coach at the time suggested that I get some blood work done to see if I was healthy underneath the hood. I mean, on the outside, I looked fit, I looked strong, I looked well, but what was really going on with my blood work? This was also around the time when my coaches and some other forward thinkers in the CrossFit community were acknowledging that the sport of CrossFit had a lot of unhealthy qualities to it and that athletes were likely not the picture of health underneath their ripped and highly fit bodies that we might expect. So encouraging me to get blood work at that time may have been motivated by this suspicion and their investigation of the topic. Either way, in 2014, I got a comprehensive blood panel done and lo and behold, my testosterone was low and again, out of reference range. So same story as before. I hadn't thought about it in almost a decade at this point. In that time, I had packed on 20 pounds of muscle. I had built my personal bests in lifts to levels I had never dreamed of. And I was climbing the ranks of the world's fittest. I was also dating at the time, sexually active, and had no indication, symptom-wise, that anything was amiss. So what was going on? What was the problem? Did this need to be corrected? Well, as a health and fitness professional coach, it's my job to obsessively pursue the best training, nutrition, and lifestyle methods for health and longevity of not only myself, but of my clients. I was in a different place in life than I was in my early 20s. Now, I really wanted to get to the bottom of this. Why was my testosterone so low? Over the years, I've tried many ways to raise my testosterone naturally, including taking adrenal support to manage high cortisol levels and give my testosterone production a chance to work. I tried intermittent fasting for over a year. I dramatically increased the amount of fat and cholesterol that I was taking into my diet in hopes that I would provide myself with more building blocks to build testosterone and other sex hormones. I practiced meditation. I've done various elimination diets. At one point, I even took exogenous DHEA and pregnenolone for about four months in hopes to give my body some precursors to testosterone that would help boost it. My conclusion was that none of this really did much for me at all. In 2015, I retested after a year and things were just about the same. So once again, I just let it go. I said, I figured this is who I am. But now there was a seed of doubt planted. And going forward, anytime I encountered a physical health or mental health obstacle, I always think to myself, is this having something to do with my low testosterone? Okay, now we're in 2019 and I was having a pretty bad bout of digestive issues. It was actually horrible and pretty embarrassing. I was basically having diarrhea every day for months on end. So I started to investigate all sorts of things for myself and spent a lot of time listening to different health professionals, podcasts, and resources online. At that time, I had stumbled upon Stan Efferding and his vertical diet concepts, and he spoke a lot about gut health, and that really resonated with me at that time. Stan is also a really big proponent of getting blood work done. So I took his advice and I got a blood panel that he recommended on his website. I'm including my 2019 labs here so you can see some of the findings. But basically, I had low testosterone again. My total T was 235 and my free T was 4.8, both on the low end or out of reference range once again. So here we are, another time point. 
and another similar test result. I didn't stop there to try and fix my digestive issues. I proceeded with some nutritional interventions and ultimately healed my gut. I found my groove again. I stayed determined to just live the best that I could and do as many things in my power to create optimal health and wellness. In 2020 and 2021, I got follow-up lab work and the story continues to be the same. Recently, I got on the phone with a doctor that I trust and after reviewing my history and all of these labs from the past decade, he basically said that my history could be explained possibly with something known as a primary hypogonadism. What does that mean? Well, I guess it means that my testes just might not have the ability to produce higher levels of hormones. Basically, it could all trace back to that one time that I got whacked in the nuts. I mean, seriously, I think I was 10 years old and I went to baseball practice and it was raining and the field was completely flooded. And so my coach got out a bucket of rubber baseballs and took us out to the blacktop for infield practice. Well, if you've ever fielded a rubber ball on wet concrete, that rubber ball skips in very funny ways. And this time it skipped in a funny way on that wet ground and it took a massive, massive hit right to my boys. <laughs> so yeah, perhaps my hypogonadism could be explained by that. Who knows? Well, that same doctor casually mentioned to me that I'd be a good candidate for testosterone replacement therapy, but we didn't go much further and more deep than that. So what have I learned through this entire process? Well, I learned that having low testosterone isn't a death sentence. I've had a fulfilling six year marriage. We have two daughters that we conceived without any issues and I get support for my mental health regularly. I'm still able to do everything I wanna do in and out of the gym and maintain a physique that most of the time I love. I attribute most of this to sound training, nutrition and lifestyle practices. The same ones that I share with functional bodybuilding community every day. Do I still suffer from anxiety and depression from time to time? Absolutely. When I do, I often think if my hormones might be contributing to my mental health challenges. Will I ever go on TRT? Perhaps. If I ever do, I'll be sure to let you know. And it will more than likely be to explore if I can improve my long-term mental health. Because at this stage in my life, I still feel like I'm able to do all the things that I want to physically that I desire. What I can't do yet motivates me to lead the life that I lead. And whether or not you choose to do hormone replacement, I believe a great foundation of regular resistance training and aerobic work, nourishing foods and sleep, recovery and stress management will likely help you improve whatever it is you are looking for answers to. There is no drug or hormone replacement alone that is going to magically work. We all still need to get in the gym, so to speak. And if you want to keep exploring a non-pharmaceutical approach, then I think functional bodybuilding principles can help you with that too. If you're still watching, I hope this video provided some insight into my journey. And if it helps you in your journey, then that was the goal. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for future content. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you have any thoughts on the topic that I shared today, and if you've ever received a diagnosis or a finding on a study that sent you down a rabbit hole without answers. Until next time, take care. See you soon.